Patterns and Numbers in Nature and the World Patterns in nature are visible regularities form found in the natural world and can also be seen in the universe. These patterns, recurring in different contexts, can sometimes be modeled mathematically. Man has developed a formal system of thought for recognizing, classifying, and exploiting patterns which we call mathematics. Nature patterns, which are not just to be admired, they are vital clues to the rules that govern natural processes. Patterns possess utility as well as beauty and once we have learned to re recognize a background pattern, we can immediately appreciate it. There is much beauty in nature's clues even without any mathematical training, we can all recognize it. Mathematical stories have its own beauty which start from the clues and deduce the underlying rules and regularities. But it is a different kind of beauty applying to ideas rather than things. The development of new mathematical stories theories begins to reveal the secret of nature's patterns. We have already seen a practical impact as well as an intellectual one of our newfound understanding of nature's secret regularities. But most important of all, it is giving us a deeper vision of the universe in which we live and of our own place in it. The modern understanding of visible patterns is developed gradually through the years. Patterns can be observed even in stars which move in circles across the sky each day. The weather seasons cycles each year, winter, spring, summer, and fall. All snowflakes contain six-fold symmetry which no two or are exactly the same. There are evidence presented by mathematician that hexagonal snowflakes have an atomic geometry of ice crystals. Patterns can be seen in fish patterns like spotted drunk fish, spotted puffer, blue spotted stingray, spotted moral eel, coral grouper, red lion fish, yellow box fish, and angel fish. These animals and fish stripes and spots attest to mathematical regularities in biological growth and form. These evolutionary and functional arguments explain why these animals need their patterns. But it is not explained how the patterns are formed. Zebras, tigers, cats, and snakes are covered in patterns of stripes. Leopards and hyenas are covered in patterns of spots. And giraffes are covered in patterns of blotches. Natural patterns like the intricate waves across the oceans, sand dunes on deserts, formation of typhoon, water drop with ripple, and others. These serve as clues to the rules that govern the flow of water, sand, and air. One of the most strikingly mathematical landscapes on Earth is to be found in the Great Urge or Sands Oceans of the Arabian and the Sahara Desert. When wind blows steadily in a fixed direction, sand dunes form and simple patterns is the transverse dunes, which looks like ocean waves. If the sun is slightly moist and there is a little vegetation to bind it together, then you may find parabolic dunes. 
Other patterns in nature can also be seen in the ball of mackerel, the V formation of geese and the sky and the tornado formation of starlings. This prevalence of patterns in locomotion extends to the scuttling of insects, the fight of birds, the pulsation of jellyfish, and the wave-like movements of fish, worms, and snakes. Good day, so we are now in the topic of Fibonacci sequence or numbers, but before we talk about the topic, so let me show you on, a screen, on your screen a photo that are related to our topic. So what was your idea on that photo? Okay, thank you for your idea. That's a flower and it has a numbers of petals also. But the question here, have you ever counted the numbers of petals on that flower? So if you try to count the numbers of petals of the flower, you would likely notice and discover the sequence of Fibonacci numbers. For example, that flower has a 4, 6, 10, 16, 26 or more petals that is a called a sequence of Fibonacci. As we conclude, the leaves of an pine cones also arrange left and right handed spirals. So as you can see the photo, it has a spiral look alike. It has a Fibonacci sequence of numbers. Additionally, we have two hands and both of our hands has five fingers. And did you notice that in every fingers is divided into three parts? It is one, two, and three. And all of this number are Fibonacci numbers. So we are now moved to the second question. What is Fibonacci sequence? Anyone? Okay, so thank you for your idea. Fibonacci sequence is a series of number in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. For example, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And based on the description, each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So for example, if you add 1 plus 1, it is equals to 2. If you add 2 plus 1, it is equals to 3. If you add 3 plus 2, it is equals to 5. And if you add 5 plus 3, it is equals to 8. And all of these numbers are called Fibonacci sequence. But if your number or sequence is started with a 0, like this, so if you add 0 plus 1, it equals to 1. If you add 1 plus 1, it is equals to 2. And if you add 2 plus 1, it equals to 3. And so on and so forth. And always remember, in every sequence, it is a called Fibonacci sequence. However, in mathematical ways, every Fibonacci sequence is represented with this formula. Why is it in every mathematical way, in mathematical ways, it has a formula? Because we can use to find the nth digit in the sequence. Okay, so let us continue. So I will be showing another photo that will, uh, that will shake your mind and capture your idea. Who is he? Anyone who have idea? Okay, that is correct. He is Leonardo Pisano, known as Fibonacci and a widely associated mathematician. Also, he discovered the sequence of the numbers based on his statement, adding the last two numbers of the sequence to form a known golden rectangle. And also, it is a perfect rectangle based on his idea. He again, so he is Leonardo Pisano known as a Fibonacci. Take a note for that. What makes Fibonacci sequence special? Okay, so this number, say 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on and so forth, might just a series of uh, numbers. But Fibonacci sequence discovers in various form or any different form. So I'll be showing another photos that uh, that can capture your mind. Why is that Fibonacci sequence is so special? 
first photo is the egg. Have you noticed it has a ratio? It has a ratio, of course, the number. Another one is the horn of a sheep. Third one is the snail. Fourth one is the sunflower. The fifth one is the seahorse, the tail of the seahorse. And uh, another one photo is the nose of the elephant. Have you noticed that it's like of his nose, a ratio. And lastly, the flower. So have you noticed it's like a twirl also. So this might be the various form that can evaluate the Fibonacci sequence. So everywhere and anywhere, Fibonacci sequence is there. Anywhere we go, everywhere we go, asa patamakitan, Fibonacci sequence is always there. Furthermore, there's also another offshot of Fibonacci sequence. First is the golden ratio in nature. So what is golden ratio in nature is all about? And in mathematics, Two quantities are in the golden ratio if their ratio is the same of their sum to larger of the two quantities. This golden ratio also expressed as an equation where A is larger than B. Or this is the example. A plus B is, is sum and it and the equals of the and equals to the sum is divided by E is equals to E divided by e which is equally close to 1.618033 the golden ratio also value and represent by the greek letter pi we will add 13 plus 8 and we will be add 13 plus 8 and it is and it is equals to 21 after you after getting the answer of the addition let us divide the, your answer into into the a Okay, so which is 13. So 21 divided 13. So the answer is 1.6153846. And take a look back of your note if your answer is closely to the golden ratio. However, in geometry, golden ratio is applied as a growth factor. And also logarithmic spiral known as a golden spiral like this. I will be showing some photos that might are that my that are related to the golden ratio and a golden spiral so first photo is a uh, seashell seashells are most common examples of a golden ratio and a golden spiral because the outline and the shape of the shell is like a golden spiral it is from the point until it's widely formed that's why seashells are most common examples of a golden ratio and a golden spiral these photos are examples of naturally examples of a golden ratio or a golden spiral so we are now moved to the second one of the type of the golden ratio in Fibonacci sequence which is which is golden ratio in arts but first did you know that most of the famous artists uses a golden ratio or a spiral ratio in their creative works? Based on the description, golden ratio in art usually used to achieve beauty, balance, and harmony in art, architecture, and design. That's why most of the famous artists uses golden ratio in arts. That's why. The second description it is also uh, it is also the golden ratio is originally named by the Greek golden section or a golden proportion or a divine proportion usually devoted by the Greek letter pi. Pi represents the irrational number. However, in golden ratio in arts, Timaeus said that. Plato describes five possible solids that can relate the golden ratio and considered as mathematic relationship. What are those five solids that can relate golden ratio? So these are tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, icosahedron, and lastly dodecahedron. So these fives are considered as a mathematic relationship in golden ratio in arts based on Timaeus statement in this golden ratio in arts 
Most of the Renaissance artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael are uses or commonly use the golden ratio or a spiral ratio. For the examples of the creative works of Leonardo da Vinci, The Last Supper, The Vitruvian Man, Mona Lisa, and the Saint Jerome are most or usually uses a golden ratio. However, in Michelangelo uses also the golden ratio like the creation, the creation of Adam. And lastly, the artist Raphael also uses of his works just like the School of Athens and many more. Those three famous Renaissance artists uses the golden ratio in their arts and also their creative works. And we are now to the last part of the golden ratio in Fibonacci sequence which is the golden ratio in architecture. From the description, architects often uses the golden ratio in designing buildings and massive infrastructures. One of the massive infrastructure uses the golden ratio are the following. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, the second one, the United Nations building and the most famous tower in Paris, the Eiffel Tower. Additionally, Swiss French architect Lee Corbusier, a pioneer of modern architecture who used golden ratio in his modular system. From seashells, flowers, bananas, human airs, buildings, infrastructures, waves, typhoons, horn of a ship, to galaxies, golden ratio can be seen everywhere and anywhere and known as the divine proportion. Okay, let's proceed with the patterns and regularities. So, mathematics is all around us. As we discover more about our environment, we can mathematically describe nature. So, from the beauty of a flower, the tree, and even the rocks formations. So, there's also an example of a microscopic level of nature, which is the um, snowflakes. So, in our everyday living, we encountered mathematics because mathematics is not just about numbers but it includes the shapes and the patterns. So there are different types of patterns, the symmetry, the fractal, and the spiral. So the first one is the symmetry. So symmetry is a sense of harmonious and beautiful proportion of balance or an object in environment to any of various transformations. So it um, involves the idea that one side or part of an object or system is a mirror image or a reflection of the other side. So there are two main um, types of symmetry. So the first one is this um, bilateral symmetry. So in which the left and the right sides of organism can be divided into approximately mirror image of each other along the midline. So symmetry exists in living things such as in insects, animals, plants, flowers, and others. So animals mainly have bilateral or vertical symmetry, so even leaves of plants and some flowers such as orchids. So when we say bilateral, this is when an object can be divided into two identical halves along a line, and each half is a mirror image of the other. So examples of this one are the plant leaves, the butterfly, and the flower, where as you can see, there is a midline where we divided at vertically, vertically, both sides are just the same like a reflection. So the second type of symmetry is the radial symmetry or the rotational symmetry. So it is a type of symmetry around a fixed point known as the center and it can be classified as either cyclic or the head drop. So when we say cyclic, there's a rotation symmetry around a center point but no mirror lines. And the hedral symmetry is a rotation symmetry around a center point with mirror lines through the center point. So here's the example images, the fruit, uh, the orange fruit, the petals of a flower, and a starfish. So when we say radial symmetry, this means that some objects can be rotated by a certain angle around a central point, and they appear the same after each rotation. So a fivefold symmetry is found in the echinoderms and the group which includes the starfish, the sea urchins, and the sea lilies. So radial symmetry suits organisms like sea anemones, whose adults do not move, and jellyfish. So, as you can see, starfish contains five arms, and sea urchins also have five folds. That's why they're called D5 symmetry. So, while the jellyfish have four folds, 
It's called T4 symmetry. So Rachel symmetry is evident in different kinds of flowers, the fruits, and the plants. So among non-living things, snowflakes have six-fold symmetry. Each fold structure forms a record of the varying conditions during its crystallizations with the theory and same pattern of growth of each six arms. Generally, crystals have a variety of symmetries and crystal habits, so some are cubic or octahedral. So the second type of a pattern, so the second type of pattern is the fractal. So a fractal is a curve or geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. So fractal is one of the newest and most exciting branches of mathematics. So it is a class of highly irregular shapes that are related to continents, coastlines, and snowflakes. So it is useful in modeling structures in which similar patterns recur at progressively smaller scales and in describing partly random or chaotic phenomena such as crystal growth, the fluid turbulence, and the galaxy formation. So when you say fractals, it is something like a nature self-replicating patterns. So where small parts resemble the whole thing. So this means that when you zoom in on a portion of a fractal, you'll find smaller copies of the overall shape, and this pattern repeats infinitely. So the last type of pattern is the logarithmic spiral or the growth spiral. So it is a self-similar spiral curve which often appears in nature. So it was first described by René Descartes, a French mathematician and philosopher, and it was later investigated by Jacob Bernoulli, so the one who introduced the first principles of the calculus of variation. So spirals are more evident in plants. So we also see spirals in typhoon, whirlpool, galaxy, the, the tail of chain lane, and the shell among others. So when we say spiral, it is a shape that starts small and gets bigger as it goes around and around. So it's like a circle that keeps stretching outward as what you see in the example images. So here are the, some examples of a spiral. Behavior of nature can be observed in our daily life. Such natural regularities of nature include symmetry, fractals, spirals, trees, minders, waves, foams, tessellations, cracks, stripe, and spots. Nature also shows the relationship in the existence of the golden ratio. Recall that the golden ratio is considered as the most blessing to the human visual sensation and creates a feeling of satisfaction and harmony within an image. Golden ratio can be found in the beauty of nature, the growth patterns of many plants, insects, and the universe. Honeycombs of the bees show specific regular repeating hexagon. The design is highly efficient. It uses the least amount of wax to store the honey giving a strong structure with no gaps. In a zebra's coat, the alternation pattern of blacks and white are due to the mathematical rules that govern the pigmentation chemicals of its skin. Spider webs illustrate a beautiful pattern. The spider creates a structure by performing innate steps. The nautilus shell has natural patterns which contain a spiral shape called logarithmic spiral. Age of the trees can be determined by applying dendrochronology, which is a scientific method of dating based on the amount of rings found in the score of a tree. The age of the turtle can be estimated based from its scutes. The smallest Scutes is in the center, while the largest ones on the outside are the newer ones. The hexagonal honeycombs formed by bees and the spirals formed by spiders are among the wonders of nature. Lightning during storms create fractals. Foam bubbles formed by trapping pockets of gas 
in a liquid or sully. In most foam, the volume of gas is large, with thin films of liquid or solid separating the regions of gas. Cracks create linear openings that form in materials to relieve stress in the land. Cracks can also be found on the barks of trees which show some sort of weaknesses in the bark. The minder is one of a series of regular sinuous curves, bends, loops, turns, or windings in the channel of the body of water. These are the river, stream, or water course. Minder is produced by a body of water as it erodes the sediments comprising an outer concave bank and de deposits these and other sediments downstream on an inner convex banks. Hurricanes rotate the innermost cloud bands form golden spiral. Galaxies form the same way as the golden spiral. The waves of the sea also move in golden spiral and even the fluid dynamics create golden spiral. So let's proceed with the application of mathematics in the world. So when we hear the word mathematics, the first thing that floats in our mind is numbers. So numbers serves as the raw materials in which uh, a great deal of mathematics is forged. So however, some mathematical ideas are so basic to our world and every day in our lives, we encounter mathematics. So in our daily life, we use mathematics directly or indirectly in various fields. So the application of mathematical methods in different fields such as science, engineering, business, computer science, and industry is a combination of mathematical science and specialized knowledge. So for example, is the statistics, the combinatorics, and the graph theory are used by investigators to solve crimes. So other applications of mathematics is in the forensic. So mathematics is applied specifically the differential and integral calculus to clarity the blurred image to clear image. So this involves techniques like deblurring where calculus helps in reconstructing a clear image from a blurry one. So this can be valuable in criminal investigations when trying to identify objects or individuals from low quality images. So another application of the calculus is optimization or the maximize or minimize. So surface areas, volumes, profit and cost analysis, projectile motion, and etc. So in essence, so mathematics um, plays a critical role in helping forensic experts analyze evidence, reconstruct um, crime scenes, and provide scientifically sound conclusions in legal investigations. So in medical field, much of a function of a protein is determined by its shape and how the pieces move. So many drugs are designed to change the shape or motion of a protein by modeling using geometry and related areas. So um, mathematics applied to develop medicine to cure diseases, and thus mathematics is indispensable in uh, medical research, diagnosis, treatment, and healthcare management. So this contributes to advan advancements in the field and improved a patient care. So in fluid dynamics, engineers use um, numerical analysis and phenomena involving heat, electricity and magnetism, relativistic mechanics, quantum mechanics, and other theoretical constructs. So this statement highlights that fluid dynamics is a highly interdisciplinary field. So and engineers often need to um, extend their mathematicals and computational models beyond traditional fluid flow equations to um, account for phenomena involving the heat and other theoretical constructs. So mathematics um, provides the tools to describe, predict, and optimize the behavior of fluids leading to advancements in various fields of science and engineering. And when it comes to information technology, modern computers are invented through the help of mathematics. So an important area of application of mathematics is in the development of formal mathematical theories related to the development of computer science. So mathematics is the foundation upon which many aspects of um, information technology are built. 
so enabling the creation of secure systems. Computer science development includes logic, relations, functions, basic set theory, counting techniques, graph theory, combinatorics, discrete probability, recursion, recurrence relation, and number theory. And computer-oriented numerical analysis, the operation research techniques are the simulation Monte Carlo program, evaluation research technique, critical path method. So cryptography is also belong with the information technology or part of the information technology. So it is a combination of both mathematics and computer science and is affiliated closely with information theory, computer security, and engineering. So it is used in applications present in technologically advanced societies. So examples include the security of ATM cards, computer passwords, and electronic commerce. So it is like a secret code that helps keep information safe when it's sent or stored electronically. It helps protect your private information in the digital world. So when it comes to archaeology, archaeologists use a variety of mathematical and statistical techniques to present the data from archaeological service and try to find patterns to shed light on past human behavior and in carbon dating artifacts. So uh, mathematics aids archaeologists in analyzing data, so making accurate measurements and developing models to better understand the past. So contributing to our knowledge of the ancient civilizations and their histories. So in social sciences such as the economics, the sociology, the psychology, and the linguistics all now make extensive use of mathematical models using the tools of calculus, the probability, game theory, and network theory. So uh, mathematics is a valuable tool in the social sciences for collecting and analyzing data, creating models, and making predictions to gain a deeper understanding of human behavior, the society, and the world we live in. So in economics, mathematics such as probability and statistics are used. So the models may be deterministic, linear or nonlinear, static or dynamic, continuous or discrete, and all types of algebraic differential. So difference and integral equations arise for the solution of these models. So mathematics plays a crucial role in economics by um, providing a systematic way to analyze and understand economic concepts. By providing systematic way to analyze and understand economic concepts as it provides the tools and framework for economists to analyze, model, and make predictions about uh, various economic phenomena, helping business, governments, and individuals make informed decisions. And when it comes to the political science, political analysts study past elections results to see changes in voting patterns and the influence of various factors on voting behavior. So on switching of votes among political parties and mathematical models for conflict resolution using the game theory and statistics. So math helps us study voting behavior, calculate elections results, and understand trends in both their preferences through statistical analysis. Example is the probability and the statistics where it is used to conduct polls and surveys during the elections. And when it comes to music and arts, the rhythm that we find in all music notes is the result of innumerable permutations and combinations. So music theorists understand musical structure and communicate new ways of hearing music by applying set theory, abstract algebra, and number theory. So it is said that the universe is written in the language of mathematics and its characters are triangles, circles, and other geometric figures. So mathematics provides a foundation for the structure and beauty in music and art. So the golden ratio that is used in the art and architecture to create aesthetically pleasing proportions. And when it comes to rhythm or music, math is fundamental to music's rhythm. So time signatures like three fourth indicate how bits are divided, helping musicians maintain a consistent tempo. So mathematics also helps musicians create melodies and harmonies. So while guiding artists and crafting visual striking works. So these connections between math and creativity enrich our experience of both music and the arts. So among those applications of mathematics in our world, we can say that mathematics has always been there anytime, even if we might not realize that what we do is already involving math. So mathematics is an essential um, tool in our daily lives, helping us to make um, practical decisions, manage our finances, and navigate the world around us. So its applications are numerous and varied. So demonstrating the 
importance of mathematical literacy in our everyday routines. And that's the end of our topic. Thank you for listening and hoping that you understand and gain another knowledge in regards to the tactics under the chapter 1.